think we always had an idea of the kind of band we wanted to be in. We always had that in our heads right from the start. And it was only we moved out to London uh, and still messed around together. And then uh, we, we got Bernard through an advert and he just sort of happened to be the best guitarist we'd ever heard, which was a bit of a shock because, you know, we basically couldn't play. And that was when we got serious straight away, when we realised that the, sort of the idea of the band that we'd always had in our heads was actually virtually within reach. I suppose that we got a very strong sense of classicism in, in the band. Without being backward looking, classicism as in timelessness rather than retrovision. Um, simple, uh, communicative, ambitious, meaningful. The kind of band that people remember rather than people read about for a week. I spent about five years going to F um, scathing the, the sort of classified columns in the NME and the Melody Maker and, and the, the Potter's Bar advertiser and things and um, uh, trying to find just sort of about going to auditions and things but just and most of them turned me down or didn't like me or, or whatever and I don't think they sort of liked me but I think they thought I was better than them at the guitar anyway. Tell you that you've got to learn to pay your dues, and you think, oh no, I'm not going to do this. Because I think every band's got the kind of the spirit of punk inside them, you know, the kind of like the Andy Warhol spirit of pop. Um, I think you have to when you first start off, because you have to be, you have to be an idea rather than a musical reality, because it does actually take a number of years to learn how to how to how to write songs, learn how to become what you are, and. Uh, you can get by by ripping off people's, using the same effects pedals as people, but you'll only last a month. Um, and we actually have paid our dues, boringly enough. <laughs> yeah, that's true, you know. But I mean, there's something to be said for a good bit of uh, old-fashioned hatred. I'd recommend it to anyone who's thinking of starting a band. <laughs> A try, bit of try, pain, you know. Yeah, you need, try to, and be you need to go through. You need to go through a lot of things. A lot of tension and stuff, I think. Um, bands that have it on a plate, and bands that have the people that have their lives on a plate, don't ever do anything worthwhile because there's n nothing for them to strive against. There's no, there's no tension and there's no abrasiveness. And harmony is quite a boring thing, really, and quite an uncreative thing. We're quite sort of old-fashioned musicians in a way. Really? We put a lot of care into things like slaves, things like that, which we have total control over. Um, when it's something like that, yeah, completely. But, but w when it comes down to it, no one ever remembers sort of like a great Rolling Stones interview or that sort of fantastic Sex Pistols, you know, biography. You know what I mean? I mean, it's the music in the end of it. And uh, the only reason why I think we've come across quite well is because it's because the band works, so it's very easy for us to, to justify it. You know, we'd be in a, a terrible pickle if we weren't any good, because we'd constantly be trying to justify, you know, a load of grandiose c claims that'd be made on our behalf, which we probably couldn't do. But we don't. We never sit down and think, say, right, what are we going to say to the enemy this week? Yeah. Um, our, our whole kind of public image is is, a, is very natural, really. Um, the, the the press. Uh, Exaggerate some aspects of our personalities and stuff, which is which is which is fair enough because that's how people that's how people communicate to to the masses. You have to.
the lyrics aren't anything to do with bisexuality. They're to do with sexuality. And bisexuality happens to be a branch of sexuality. I'm not, I'm not deliberately limiting myself to any particular sexual orientation at all. So that's an incredibly limited thing to do. The, song, it's, the songs are, are about sexuality. Ha they happen to deal, some of them specifically, with different areas of sexuality. But it's sexuality that's supposed to be expressed. And sexuality is an incredibly important thing in music. I mean, it's a quite an important thing in life, really. And it's very important to us to communicate, to broadcast our thoughts to as many people as possible. And uh, a certain thought, in, I've, I've never really been able to listen to songs that, that didn't have any lyrical depth, really. It's always quite frustrated me. That's the one thing that I've been always been constantly frustrated with pop music, it's lack of ambition towards, uh, uh, with lyrics. Um, I, think, I think about things a lot and I want to express them sort of musically and lyrically. Yeah. It's incredibly important. It, it it just adds another layer of, of depth to a band, you know. If we played exactly the same music and, and I sang exactly the same tunes and stuff and the words were different, the feeling of the song would be, I think, be completely different. Because hopefully what the words and the music go hand in hand and one expresses the other. They're not just an afterthought, and the music isn't just an afterthought. Or it's, you know, the whole thing is lives together as one sort of being, really. Anything which in any way could be described as uh, the artistic part of the band, we have complete control over. From the titles, which single gets released. I mean, we listen to the record company because they're, you know, they're not a bunch of businessmen. The reason we signed with the record company we did is because they were massive fans of Suede. You know, they signed us when everyone else thought we were awful. And they, they put belief in us, but basically we can, we can do anything we want. You know, we could record an album of instrumental Bulgarian folk tunes, and they, they, you know, if, if that's what we wanted to do, they'd do it. We wouldn't, but you know, I mean, it's, it's really simple. We have complete control over what the band does. I think backlashes happen when a band starts letting its audience down. I don't, I don't think a backlash is actually a purely media-driven thing. It can, they, those two things can sometimes go hand in hand. And um, sometimes you can get like you know just uh, you can get a, a whole load of um, bad faith, and that can affect the band in itself. But I think um, the media is less powerful than it would like to think it is, quite honestly. And I think that I think that your audience are, are really decide on your fate. And if you're if you're any good, then then. I don't really think the media can particularly touch you. If you're purely a creation of the media, then it's another matter. And there's lots of bands that are. But for us, um, we've got a very strong and faithful audience that love our music. And when we let them down, then we'll tumble. But until we do, then I think all the media can do is, is accuse us of, is, of things that can't really hurt us. So that's the way to do it. And when we do let our audience down, then we'll know it's time to quit. You know, it's it's we've got a very strong sense of of perspective with the band. We look at what we produce and what we're doing after we've done it, and and see it in, in very much in context. We're not the sort of band that would kind of like release a, a kind of a record that that we'd convince ourselves was good. Mm. We sort of wouldn't really think, oh, it's us, so it's good, and kind of like try and hype out within That's our That's what minds. everyone wants at the moment. We listen to things, and, and if, if it's not good, then we admit it. We say, you know, that's just not good, you know. And, the, and we write, really, to impress each other as much as anything, and play to impress each other, which is, you know, we, we, do, we don't play to the, to the press, you know. We don't sit down and say, oh, no, someone's slagged off this track, you know, perhaps we should drop it. 
I mean, the, the, the highest sort of quality control you can have is the four members of the band like it. Because I do think we've got incredibly high standards. You know, we don't like anything, basically. <laughs> Called Suede. Um, um, it's produced by Ed Buller. Produced by Ed Buller, who's done our Lovely singles. Um, Simon played the drums, didn't you? Simon? Mm, I did. Yes. Uh, it's eleven songs. Um, three of the singles, the A sides, no B sides. Eight completely new songs. Four songs that haven't been heard by anyone e ever before. There's a lot of low life. Uh, lyrically, what would officially be termed low life, um, and there's a lot of there's a lot of hope, and hope, hopefully it's in, in 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 mood. It's very uplifting, even even the negative points can be uplifting, and that's really what I'd how I'd like our music to be heard as as kind of hopeful and uplifting and and inspiring. It's never supposed to be negative. Um, for 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 negativity's sake, you know. Even when I've been very depressed, I've always been very hopeful. Uh, it's just the way I think. Really, I'm quite an optimistic person. I'm, I never really kind of even even in the depths of doom and gloom, I don't really I don't really think doom and gloom. <laughs>